Hi, my name is Charlotte Bythewood. I'm a junior and I'm a nutrition and food science major with an emphasis in dietetics. Uh, my hometown is Cumming, Georgia, and this is my story. When I was younger, I had an older brother and he was very much into football and supercross, motocross, and then he started to transition to cars and mechanics, and I thought that was super cool. He got me outside of my comfort zone. He said, hey, we're gonna go out and I'm gonna like show you this wrestling move or I'm going to play football with you and you're gonna do it. And I said, awesome. And having a dad who was from the Ohio State University, he got me into athletics and I really fell in love with the idea of being in a group setting with other people. When I got into college, I met this girl named Miranda and she's a graduate student from Georgia Southern. She is amazing. She taught me so much about life because while we run and what runners love about running is that it's an expression really of yourself and it's a feeling that you're connected to the world around you and or you're trying to isolate from the world around you but either way it's very much a zen space and we would run for at least 10 miles i mean it was crazy early mornings late night runs and you see people in a different way you see the world in a different way. So what is a runner's high, you may ask? It is when you feel like crap in the first two miles or mile. You hit a certain point and your legs are hurting, your breath is harsh, you feel like you can't run anymore, but you keep pushing. And that's the beautiful thing, you keep pushing, you keep fighting you keep pushing yourself mentally and physically and that leads to a fantastic moment where runner's high happens. Everything, all the pain goes away and you feel like you can run forever. It's amazing and I love it. So over the years, my idea of what health and fitness is and what it means to me has changed. When I started my whole journey as far as running, I got very much into the nutritional aspect of it. Hence why I love nutrition. I love learning how carbs, lipids, fats interact with the body and how if you have a disease, what you can do to help manage it or even fix it with nutrition. Nutrition is the best cure of them all, in my opinion. It's a very holistic view, but at the same time, it really does work. And when I was on this journey of being in college, running with my friends, wanting to be the best version of myself, I actually got a little lost in the process. I put a lot of value on my body being my self-worth and I struggled with feeling like enough and feeling a sense of belonging. So that led me to work out harder, to escape more, and it led me to be hospitalized for about three months. And that was a really hard time in my life because I became depressed, I stopped eating, of course, and my motivation went down the drain. So I, I also didn't attend Georgia Southern last semester, or last year, and that was really hard for me too. But this is my journey, and what I've learned on it is that your body is not your self-worth. It is not all that you are. You are so much more than your body, and it is really those moments in life where you do push yourself mentally and physically, but you also give yourself that grace and that compassion that makes you go, oh my God, I can do this and I'm not gonna be upset. I'm not gonna punish myself for something. I have to remind myself of this every single day because when I wanna relapse into my eating disorder, I have to remember there are way better things that I could be putting my energy towards and I am enough. Some people who inspire me are all honestly the people who were, were stick by me throughout my treatment. I mean, the people who show unconditional love, because for me, I never realized what that term meant until this year. Unconditional love is when somebody loves you regardless of what happened in the past or what you are currently now. They love you just because you are human. And that makes me feel so good and I feel like we always all want to have a place and we all want to feel that way. So things that remind me um, are this right here. It says don't ever give up and the story behind that is when I was in my garage at my house I was cleaning out 
tons and tons of my dad's filing papers from when he was working because we were moving. And I came across this sheet of paper that looked very similar to this one. And if you see, it's a, it's a frog choking the stork when the stork is trying to eat it. And at the very worst of my eating disorder, when I was in the hospital, when I was being tube fed, when I was alone and in the corner, you have to remember that you can never, ever, ever give up. Like you can always, there is light on the end of the tunnel and there are people who will support you and who do love you. So that is my reminder that no matter how deep you think you are, how low, how hard, how, if you think you haven't hit rock bottom yet, you don't let that stop you. Even don't let that stop you from thinking you haven't, or if you have, like, you can get up no matter where you are. You don't have to be at rock bottom because most likely you are and you don't realize it. I'd like to take this time to talk about my mental health and the disorder that I suffered from. It's called anorexia nervosa, and that is when you latch on your self-worth to the food that you eat, or you try to fix and solve your problems based on eating or not eating, overeating, undereating. And in a time where we're all college students, in a time where we all have issues that nobody wants to talk about. Anybody, hey, how are you doing today? Fine. What does fine really mean? So we use things to cope. And some people have different coping mechanisms than others. And I've gone through an array of coping mechanisms. And it's really important to find the right coping mechanism, the healthy coping mechanism that works for you. Um, I think that mental health is something that isn't talked about a lot. I think it's getting talked about more but never be afraid to share your story. Everybody's story is important. Everybody's story is deeper than what you think and it shapes who we are today. And I couldn't be more happy looking back on how my story has evolved.